Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. German security company SecConsult uh, did release details about a rather easy to exploit vulnerability in various Ubiquiti equipment. Ubiquiti makes a lot of uh, wireless equipment, a lot of carrier equipment as well. This bug does affect a lot of the point-to-point -point link systems and the like. There's a long list of vulnerable devices in the advisory. It does, by the way, not affect the very popular Unify line of equipment that is also being sold by Ubiquiti. Now, this particular vulnerability takes advantage of really two flaws. First of all, these devices do run a very outdated version of PHP, PHP version 2. Now, this version of PHP makes it relatively easy to inject commands into PHP code that is being exploited here, but in itself, this may not have been really all that bad, given that you have to authenticate. The second problem here is that there is no cross-site request forging protection. So a victim would log in to one of these devices, not log out, and then visit a website that would trick the victim's browser into injecting a command into the Ubiquiti device. There is proof of concept exploit code out there and demo videos that demonstrate how this can be used to install a shell, a remote shell, on these vulnerable devices. No patch from Ubiquiti at this point, and sadly, Ubiquiti seems to have bungled a little bit the response to the vulnerability report here. It was originally reported via Hacker One, a bug bounty site that Ubiquiti participates in last November. And Darknet intelligence company Sixgill is reporting about an interesting new remote access tool for Mac OS. Apparently, it's being offered for sale on underground forums. Costs you as much as $40,000, of course, to be paid in Bitcoin. And one of the interesting features is that they promise it will be signed with a genuine Apple code signing signature. Now, when they're talking about an Apple code signing, signing signature, they're probably talking about a certificate that you can obtain from Apple as a developer. It's typically not really that hard to obtain one of these certificates. Of course, Apple can revoke them at any time once they figure out that they're being abused. But based on some past experience with assigned malware, it actually appears to take them quite a while to revoke these certificates. Other than that, the tool that's being sold under the name of Proton does offer standard surveillance techniques, like for example, taking pictures with the webcam, reading files, recording keystrokes, and gaining remote access to the system. On the other hand, the tool is just that. It is a remote monitoring tool or remote admin tool, so it does not actually include an exploit that you would need in order to deploy this tool on a victim's system. So in the end, you're probably going to rely on the victim innocently installing this tool for you, believing that it's some kind of other piece of software. And yet another privilege escalation vulnerability was fixed in the Linux kernel. This time it's actually a module, the NHDLC module. That module is supposed to support microgate and sync link hardware. Now, uh, not a lot of people are using this hardware. So usually the module isn't loaded by default, but it's enabled by default. And an attacker could easily load the module by just connecting to a device that will then trigger the loading of this module. Quick workaround, uh, you could disable auto loading for this particular module, or of course you could and probably should just patch it. Security updates are available for many Linux distributions that include this particular module. 
VMware fixed a vulnerability in its workstation and Fusion product that could potentially lead to a VMware escape. The feature that's vulnerable here is copy paste. And if I remember some of the early work with VMware escape by Tom Liston and at SCOTUS and such, I think actually also involved uh, copy paste uh, because this sort of one channel that you have available to move data from a virtual machine to a host. So fundamentally it sort of breaks that separation between host and virtual machine. In this case, however, the product the function is faulty in itself and can be used to then compromise the host. So quick solution, just uh, patch it. Or if you are using VMware Fusion or Workstation in order to host virtual machines that may be accessible from the outside, then you probably don't really need copy paste anyway and you can disable it. Same applies for the track file feature, which essentially uses the same mechanisms. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.